Hi, I'm Tom from Malaysia, and today I'm gonna show you how to cook your sounds with the Impressa plugin. Let's roll. The Impressor plugin is a one-to-one -one digital recreation of the hardware Impressor. The plugin masters at Brainworks manage to not only recreate the sound of the Impressor, but also the behavior of each function and each part of the circuitry. The result is an amazing creative and flexible compressor you can use in many different situations on every session. We are going to show you how we used it in the context of this track. Okay, so this is our arrangement window for the rock track and I'm going to play you the intro and then we'll talk about what I did with the Impressor. So the arrangement comprises of roughly 18 tracks. It's basically drums, bass, two main electric guitars. And then we also get a synthesizer. You will see um, in this example that we use the Impressor for controlling the dynamics. Okay, that's the most usual use of compression. But also shaping sounds, boosting their energy, either through compression or distortion or changing the tone of the signal, making the signal different in the context of the track. So for instance, if we start with those tambourine hits at the beginning, here is what I did. Solo. We have a first impressor that grabs the initial transients. I'm gonna magnify it for you. It grabs the initial transients using the autofast. So with the autofast you get the fastest attack time of 0.01 milliseconds. So it makes the tambourine sound more distant. And then it goes into this second impressor where I will use a pretty long release time so it sustains the tail of the reverb longer. So here is what happens if I bypass those units. Let's transients. And a longer decay. of the reverb. Now if we take a look at this channel, that's our reverse crash, what I also did here is use the Impressor as a distortion generator to change the sound of the, of the crash. That's the dry sound. All right, now I add What happens is that the circuitry of the hardware version of the Impressor is designed so it can be a clean unit, but also add color to the signal if you want it. And this depends on the input level, but also the makeup gain. The more you crank the input level, the more you crank the makeup gain, the more color you get from the unit, and the plugin just works the same. So we can go from a totally clean signal to a nice THD enhancement to a totally distorted signal. And you will see that we use that trick a lot throughout this video. Okay, so that's our first verse. Okay, we'll start with the drums. The drums in solo. What I did is use this first instance of the Impressor. With 
out. See, so without it, it's it's way less punchy. And uh, what I basically did is set a uh, medium fast attack time of 14 milliseconds to give more snap, then use the 100 milliseconds release time to give more glue and density to the overall drum kit, as well as using a tiny bit of tilt EQ. I'm basically just boosting a half a dB above 42 Hertz and use the gain reduction limiter to prevent over compressing the drum kit. So that's the first part of the sound of this kit. The second half being this parallel bus that I created and you're gonna see that it's a bit different. Since that already a lot more compression we are drawing from this one. Without it. So that's another big part of the punch of the overall kit. And what I did is compress it pretty hard using Tylog with a release time set to the BPM of the track. It's another 50 milliseconds release time. And blend that with the original drums and the, the, the pumping effect we get from using the Tylog gives us this sense of power and energy that wouldn't be so obvious without it. Okay, so we've seen that the Impressor is great for shaping sounds and controlling their dynamics. But I also wanted to show you that the Impressor is much more than just a compressor. It can really help us bring excitement to our mixes besides compression. Let's have a look. So for instance, we are going to see what I did on this main electric guitar on the right. I'm going to play it for you in solo. We are compressing just a tiny bit. I just needed a bit more glue from this guitar. But the main trick is not on this channel, it's on this mold that I created. Because as much as I was very happy with the sound I got from just using one single ribbon mic on the amplifier, I was missing some harmonics in the top end, so I thought I would use that distortion trick we've been talking about to generate those extra harmonics and blend that with the main sound to make it more exciting. And then just tweak the tone to leave out the low end and mid range and keep the high end. So I cranked the makeup gain to the max and also used this gain plugin. It's plus 24 I added. And then used this other game plugin so I, I, I get the, the, the level I needed for the song. So that's on its own without any tone changing. And that's with this other instance. But the thing is, I am just adding this underneath the original one. And the original one is, is being used as a trigger for this one. Using the external sidechain input to which it is routed. And I also use the anti-log to change the release curve to an anti-logarithmic release curve and get this pumping effect that we were so proud of on the drum kit and use the tilt EQ to its max. Again, that's plus 6 dB at 4 kilohertz. So I'm boosting uh, 6 dB above that, 
but also cutting by 6 dB what's below 4 kilos to make sure that I keep this extra top end only. So that's without it. That's with. And that's it for this guitar. We're going to move to this other part of the mix. Well, this is the same, the same thing I'm doing on this other guitar. This is a part that I needed to uh, give the, the, or the original riff another octave. And uh, so I played those high notes use the same distortion trick, added a bit of chorus to, well, give it more attitude. Without it... With it... Then, we also have this Synthesizer, basically doing the same. Harmonizing what we, uh, I mean the original riff. But the part was pretty lame sounding on its own, so I thought I would just give it a twist. That's a much better synthesizer now. Okay, so I'm gonna play you those two tracks with their original sound. That's pretty bad. And here it is with their own processing. Now we're talking. now within the track. That's it for today. Many more things to show you about the Impressor, but that will be for the next episode. Until then, have fun with the Impressor on your music. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs>